Hello and welcome to the game show Greater Than. I'm your host Nolan and you, the contestant, get to decide which is greater than. First off, we start out with this plate of Oreos. Which is greater, this or this plate of cookies? And second, for the final lightning round, the toughest of them all, we have this briefcase of cash money versus dun 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 this case of cash money what do you decide contestant pretty simple right and yet when we talk about individuals versus community or us versus them we choose us we choose the lone wolf approach if you want to get it done right you've got to do it yourself We've all said this, or at least thought it, right? Why would I ask for help? I can do it myself. Why go to church when I can just be spiritual by myself at home? Why would I share my burdens with others? It's mine to bear. It's these kinds of things that we prioritize in faith and in life, and I think we've got it all wrong. I say this all not because I've done it right or that I've got it all figured out now that I've seen the light, but rather because I have seen the light and still struggle to partner, to share, to collaborate. Whether that's in work or in my marriage, my go-to is to do things alone and I hold tightly to that. I live in my head all day and all night and it is so hard to open up, to be vulnerable with others. However, I think if we look at scripture, it's pretty clear that we were created to be united together in Christ. I love in Galatians, it says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Well, gosh, if it's a law, I want to follow it. Or in Proverbs, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We were created to help each other, to work together, to become our best. In Matthew, Jesus says, where two or three are gathered, there Jesus is with them. I'm not saying that Jesus isn't with you alone, but Jesus makes sure, makes sure to emphasize that it is when you are in community. Jesus isn't going to miss out on that. Or perhaps my very favorite image for this comes from 1 Corinthians. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. It's as if Paul is saying that we cannot function without each other. Yeah, you might be able to be the brain, but that cannot function without the rest of the body. You might be the legs, but good luck seeing where you're going. And even more than just to function, we are called to work together, all the parts of the body coming together to be the church, to fulfill God's kingdom on earth. We need each other. We need to be in community. I've heard it another way. I'm not much of a scientist, but everything can be broken down to the smallest known substance called quarks. Quarks on their own cannot do anything. So what do they do? They team up to become protons and neutrons, which, come, uh, which team up to become atoms, and then molecules, and then cells, which creates tissues and organs, which in turn creates you. Since the very beginning of time and space, the smallest substance had to keep coming together to survive and to create, and then we have you and me. But at this point, we decide we are done coming together. We are done working together. It stops at me. But I think we have this deep desire to continue what happened to create us. This longing to keep joining together to create something new, something good, something bigger than ourselves. That's what it took for us to be created. It took quarks and protons and neutrons and atoms and all of this to come together to create almost as if there was this master design for all living things to come together to create something good. 
I believe that longing, that desire, is built into each and every one of us. It is the law of nature and of life. That is why we get married, because God knows on my own I am in so much trouble. I needed to join with my wife to create something new and life-giving. It's the same with church. On our own, we can do little, but together we can change the world. Many of you know that I have been writing songs for over a decade. It is one of my greatest outlets, but it has almost always just been me writing. This year, I've had this opportunity to do some co-writes with different people from around the nation, and it is crazy the kind of music that can be created in that space. Why? Because the life experience and the talent of two people is greater than that of just myself. Just like I could get up in front of our congregation and lead me worship music by myself each week, I have the skills to play one, maybe even two instruments at once, as well as sing. But when the team comes up, when we come together, something magical happens. We need to rely on each other in each part of our lives. We need to lean on each other in our hard times and to share our gifts and our talents in the good times. Why? Because that is the call of the universe. And because when we work together, something magical happens. I have worked in church for nearly my entire life, starting to lead worship when I was a sixth grader. I will be the first to tell you that the church is made up of some broken people, including me. It is not perfect, just like we are not, just like I am not perfect. I get that doing things on our own might seem easier, it's definitely safer. But there is nothing in this world that can replace or even replicate what it's like to be in community. To receive communion with someone who does things differently than you do. Or to hear the words of God speak into you next to people in completely different places than you. I believe that there are few things in life, if any, that can bring people of all different backgrounds, ages, beliefs, different goals, different colors, different hurts and longings, different joys and pleasures together to create something beautiful, something magical like we do at church. Many of us grew up in church singing Amazing Grace. I was at a music festival several years ago with 100,000 some different people and we got to sing that song, that song Amazing Grace together. Can you imagine what it's like to sing sing a song like that with over 100,000 people? Sure, there were some people who could sing well like me, as well as some people who were maybe tone deaf as well as other people who were exceptional at it. It didn't matter. We all raised our hearts and our voices together to sing of God's faithfulness in our lives. And I just wept. I could not prepare myself for what the Spirit was doing in those 100,000 people through that song. It's as if God was saying, whether you sing well or you are tone deaf, you are welcome in my family. It's just like when we come together in any community in love that God is saying, come broken, come bruised, come one, come all. My love, my amazing grace is enough to cover you all. And we get, and when we get to experience that together in community, something magical happens. God happens. Thank you so much for joining us today. God bless.